that Milton Erickson used to task all yeah. of his students, all of his patients or his clients. They would come down and knock on his door and he would you know, answer the door, yes, how can I help you? And they'd be like, oh, I've got a problem. I've got a phobia. And he would say, that's right, go and climb mm -hmm. Squaw Peak and bring back the purple mm -hmm. flower from the top of that mountain and then I'll yeah. work for you. And, and, and that really, if you, if you look at what he did, he was a genius because he saw that when clients were all in, when they were committed, they wanted to change something, they were prepared to climb a mountain. Yeah. Before they even had the opportunity to work with him. So he was like 95% of the work was done at that point. Now, at this point in time, you're doing perfectly okay. Everything's fine. You've just got something lodged in your throat and your normal reaction will be to cough it out. It's built mm -hmm. into the system. But unfortunately, your mother or father or someone that's an adult that you look up to is on the phone having a chat with their friends and then they look at you and see your choking yeah. on this button and you cough it up and it falls on the floor and you look at it and you smile. Meanwhile, you look at your mother and she's freaking out, ah, ah, thinking you're gonna die. And you look at the button, you look at your mother and you've instantly made a connection. She's freaking out at that thing that's on the floor. That must be dangerous. Yeah. That's just a theory, a one-time learning lost in the imagination for a pe period of time until such time one day something happens and you see a button and you have a reaction, you freak out and you have no reason or no understanding as to the reason why. Yeah. Someone with a phobia now, I'd rather have a conversation with them, help wake them up from the nightmare. Amazing. Help wake them up from the nightmare and get them to see it's just thought. Even a phobia is just intense thought. And we yeah. so, as, as change makers, I think we really underestimate the power of thought. The power of thought to change your biochemistry, to create yeah. stress, the power of thought to be there one moment and then evaporated like a puddle in a heat wave, gone the next, mm -hmm. and your whole experience of life can change just by learning that thought is the fundamental principle behind the human experience. It's so profound yeah. and so simple. Like all those people we've just talked about are fear of bananas and thunder and spiders and and an intense reaction to this stimulus and unable to control your thinking Well, we can't control it. Yeah. Like trying to control the weather, we can't control it. But if we understand how the weather works, we put an umbrella up when it's raining. If we understand yeah. how the mind works, instead of trying to intervene on a pervasive problem like a phobia, just understand, hey, when you see a spider externally in your outside world, your mm -hmm. inner world corresponds by bringing back memories with intense feelings attached. If you could learn to not be bothered about the feeling, then it doesn't matter what presenting problem ever comes up in your life, you'll just not react to it. You'll yeah. just, you'll learn to dial it out in your own way. Like all those people that Richard Bandler interviewed that have overcome phobias on their own. Human beings have the capacity to have insight to heal up all on their own, which is a bit of a paradox for hypnotists, right, Eugene? Because, yeah. you know, if all hypnosis, which we know is self-hypnosis, they shouldn't be a hypnotist because it's not, we're not required yeah. in, in that respect because everybody is changing all on their own. And we're just, I think, really getting too much credit. We're just nudging clients, <laughs> aren't we, really? That's it. We just learn a secret. Some of my students will say, well, how do you put a phobia in? I say, well, have you not seen Jaws the movie? More people were scared of sharks. People would walk around puddles yeah. just in case. Oh, my God, there might be something in there, in that yeah, puddle. Exactly. So Steven Spielberg yeah. installed via his genius, you know, that yeah. opening scene of Jaws, you know, da, 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 and there's the girl swimming. Do you know that scene? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There were people throwing up, okay, at the first showing of Jaws in 1970, whenever it was, wow. 75, 74, at the premiere, pe the couple of people passed out in the audience in the opening Jesus. scene. And one woman, she was so ill that she couldn't stay 
and watch the rest of the movie. Wasn't that absolutely fantastic? I'm sure that you found a lot of information in this very short video, just so maybe like four or five, six minutes, however long it was. But that is not all. You can have access to the entire presentation of this amazing speaker, plus 40 more other presentations and speakers. And you can have access for life. You can have access to the video recording, to the audio recording, to the swipe files, to the transcripts, to all of the bonuses and special gifts that all of the speakers and presenters and also the organizers are offering in the premium pass package. So if you like this, if you want more, make sure to sign up below for the premium pass and have lifetime access to everything. I'm sure it'll be one of the best investments you've ever made in your life, in yourself, in your practice, in your health, and also with working with clients. So go ahead, click on the button below, sign up for the premium pass, and we'll see you on the other side.